Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joseph Gaffey alongside University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz, my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr. Hurricanes coming off a win against Louisville, a bye week, and now we'll take on FIU coach at Marlins Park. We're going back to the site of the old Orange Bowl, and uh, for many, that's sacred ground, and the University of Miami had so much success at the Orange Bowl uh, game inside Marlins Park, and, and your thoughts on returning to that area. Yeah, the Canes are coming to Little Havana. How, how cool is that? It's, um, you know, our players won't get it. You know, they, they, don't, they don't understand, but I know our fan base will. Uh, I certainly will. I know you guys will. Um, just a trip over. You know, of course, the park looks different than it did, you know, back then, but the neighborhood doesn't really look all that different. And, uh, and just that old trek, and it wasn't just the Canes. It was the Dolphins, too, that, right. that the city of Miami made for a long time when you came to watch football. Um, you either got off on the Dolphin Expressway or 95 or however you got there, you got there. And, um, you know, the smells, the sights, it, it'll, you know, it won't be exactly the same, but it'll, it'll be a neat bit of nostalgia for every related to Miami football. Coach, how about the opportunity to play in the Dome or in the stadium or Marlin Stadium? A little different layout, as Joe Minch will mention many, many times, the direction of the field. But that's got to be exciting for the young men as well. I think it's going to provide a very... Uh, exciting atmosphere you know I think even though if the roof will be open but I think just the the nature of the stands and the and the there is still a, an overhang and it's going to keep the noise in it's, it's going to be a you know that, that stadium doesn't get full all too often and I think I think it'd be great to see everybody in there and, and the weird sight lines getting kind of strange you know football field on a baseball field but but it's okay and it kind of takes everybody out of their comfort zone a little bit which I think is not a bad thing um, I think it'll get our guys excited about the environment I know it'll get their guys uh, excited as well so uh, should be should be an entertaining and, and uh, energetic uh, game I would say well if you grew up in this area you saw the Canes or the Dolphins or maybe you saw a Bruce Springsteen concert or you saw Arguello and Aaron Pryor slug it out at the Orange Bowl it was used for so many things right. what, what were some of the things that you remember about going there well it was it was just those football weekends you yeah. know it was uh, you know I remember going back uh, Dolphins playoff games you know, I remember the, the, the AFC Championship game against the Jets. Um, A.J. Dewey with the three interceptions, quagmire. you know, in the quagmire. <laughs> yeah, getting, getting to storm the field after the game, that was kind of a rarity in, in Miami. And not to mention, of course, all the great Hurricanes games, you know, whether it was uh, Notre Dame in third and 43 mm -hmm. or, um, you know, whitewashing FSU 31 to nothing, the, you know, the national championship games that, that came through there. And, and then, like you mentioned, it was, you know, uh, you know, I saw Michael Jackson, the Thriller tour in there, um, <laughs> U2, Joshua Tree, the Rolling Stones. I mean, so there's all kinds of, you know, that just, that was our spot, man. We didn't, we didn't have anything else in Miami, right? We didn't have basketball, we didn't have hockey, that we had the Orange Bowl. That was our place. Hey, Joe, I think it's, you know, you go to the football games, we talk about the home field advantage. I was at that Stones concert myself. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was special. And the thing that people don't really talk about is, my dad played there in the 50s on, they, I, think, I think they played mm -hmm. Thursday or Friday, Thursday nights, I guess it was, high school. And right. they would fill that thing up on Thanksgiving. I guess it was the Miami High, Edison or Gables and Jackson. Jackson. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that, you know, it was, it was a full house for high school back in the day. Right. It, it is going to be a portal for fans to go back in time. I think it is. And, you know, I, I used to say when the stadium was still there, you could walk around that field and about anywhere you stopped, you could think of something really famous in football history. And whether it's Joe Namath running out, out of the tunnel with the number one finger, or whether it's the, the hook and lateral in the game against the Chargers, or Kellen Winslow walking off the field afterwards, uh, the great Steelers, Cowboys, Super Bowls, you know, and some of the great catches in that game. And there's just, there are so many football moments uh the the game against the bears in 1985 that i was at you know the the, the per, you know ruining the perfect bear season and so um and you could stop about anywhere on the field and say i remember where this happened and that mm -hmm. happened um so it, it, it there's great nostalgia for all of us um but we also know the time goes on right and and that's just the way it is because you could have done the exact same thing at yankee stadium you know where babe ruth played um and at some point that had to go in the old boston garden and the parquet floor and larry bird and bob Cousy and all these type guys and they don't play there anymore. It's just, it just, it just happens. That's just, that's progress, really. Um, we have the memories. Uh, they'll never go away. But those memories were caused by people. You know, the, you know, the home winning streak was the Miami Hurricanes. Right. It was the players that contributed to that home winning streak, and that, that goes into Miami Hurricanes lore, not Orange Bowl lore. You know, the OB was a great part of it. We knew the great home field advantage. But we saw two years ago when we get the Canes right and the city comes to, to play on a Saturday night like it does. 
you know, wherever we show up in Miami, it's going to be a great place. And, and, and we think we've got a great stadium in Hard Rock. Uh, we love being there. It's just fun to, to have a weekend of memories back in Little Havana. And you got a, a big game, a lot to play for here down the stretch. Mm -hmm. Team's playing really well, right where you want to be in terms of playing maybe your best football at right. the end of the year. Uh, and there's a lot that goes into that. But uh, let's let's go with that, and we'll start on offense first. We'll get the Shaq quarterman. But Jaron Williams is playing really well at quarterback for you, and the whole offense is playing well. The whole offense is really coming together, and I think that's – you know, I remember wrenching way back when we felt like our execution would catch up to our effort as the year went on. Um, and I think that's happening. You see a young offensive line that's starting to come together and, and improve and learning lessons every week so they're getting better and better and better. That helps protect Jaron. I mean, it helps the running game, which then helps Jaron um, in protection. Wideouts, you know, coming together, you know, finding our best combination of guys, you know, emergence of guys like D. Wiggins, Mike Harley, stepping up. KJ Osborne has been so steady for us all year. Um, it's fun to watch those guys develop. And now it's that eagerness of getting ready to get back out there and perform again. But understanding how, why are we getting better? Oh, it's because what we were doing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the lead up to the game. And then on Saturday, we're confident in our performance because of our preparation. Manny, also defensively, you look at where Miami has come through the whole season. I mean, you it's been well documented how you got back involved and but the growth and the maturity but sometimes as you've mentioned many many times your seniors got to grow up again as well and you got that over the last month as well yeah our, our seniors on defense have been on all three levels really you know with the up front the emergence of a Trayvon Hill mm -hmm. you know as a senior and the way he's played up there and you can't say enough about Shaq Quarterman and, and Michael Pigney but Shaq has just been on a different level um, the last four games and and then a Rob Knoll is in the back end because obviously very similar to our young offensive line on offense, you know, our young secondary on defense, you know, had some bumps early in the season, mm -hmm. which is just unfortunately young secondaries are going to do. And um, they have started to come together. They have started to um, play better as a unit. You know, we're tackling better. We, we, we had one bad tackling game that cost us a win. Um, we've made that into an outlier, which is great. Um, but we still feel that our best performance is out there. It's, it's, it, we have not shown as good as we can possibly be, and that's what you're always gunning for. You want the team to believe that there's something more if we just get this, 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 you know, cleaned up, and, and I think our guys feel the same thing. Uh, you touched on Shaq for a moment. Shaq Quarterman, he's got to be all ACC. Yeah. Got to be. Uh, probably all American, but the last four or five games have been ridiculous. 50, 55 tackles here in the second half of the season, tackles for losses. Tackles, hard tackles. You describe him making a tackle. Generally, it's Shaq Corden with another hard tackle. Yeah, we call it the Shaq shoulder. <laughs> he's he's, he's going to make you feel it, you know. And um, he, he, when he tackles, he wants to leave a mark, you know, wants you to remember him by. And so um, he's always been that. He's always been the tough guy in the middle of our defense, but his, his game is elevated. And um, the way he's playing sideline to sideline and just, and just, you know, relentless his conditioning level for as hard as he plays and as much as he plays because he doesn't, he doesn't want to come out the field. His conditioning level right now is at a level I've never seen for a linebacker. The way he can just play as hard as he can play and somehow muster the energy to do it again the next play and then do it every play, um, that's just what type of, wow, what a young man he is. I mean, he, and we always knew he was great, but it's, it's, it has gone to a different place. Coach, I'm, I get the feeling, especially, of course, the last month, that everybody now wants this season to – go for another 20 games. Yeah. I mean, it, not, you, they've got the fever of what it's like to be a team, about how to win, about the enjoyment of, of dominating at certain times and, and right. how good that feels, whether it was the offensive line having that feeling, the defensive front, the secondary. Everybody's got a taste of that, and that you do not ever want to stop. You don't. You know what they're feeling is they're feeling the connection. Mm -hmm. And that's what we felt like we were missing early on. That was a missing piece. So, you know, how many times we said it, you know, we established our toughness. We built the backbone. All, and those are all no small things, right? We, we kind of had the culture right in the first half of the season. We weren't getting the wins. And we weren't getting the wins because of the little things that the player accountability, where they've got to they gotta feel it for one another. And, and once you have that, see, it's funny. It, you may think that's a burden to have to always be right for your teammate. Once you realize that it's not, it's the opposite, that you realize that you are all chained together and you want to be chained together because you go further. I know this sounds like, you know, something you put a kitten poster on, but but you do go further together. You can go farther with, with, with a team behind you. Um, now you feel that connection. You don't want to let that go. 
You know, Manny, the other thing is, is you have the responsibility as teammates, but to me it's turned into a brotherhood. Now yeah. you've got 105 brothers fighting for each other instead of 105 guys on a team. That's and it, that's, and that's, that's what the difference is. That's it. And, and when you see all three phases playing for each other, offense, defense, special teams, which has made such a great emergence, you know, being the glue in between. Um, and, when, and what I can always tell, you can always tell when you watch the sideline and you watch when one unit's not in and how they're rooting for the unit that is. Um, and that's where you can see a team is truly connected. And it's not just, you know, two separate functioning units, you know, that are just independent contractors that we're all playing together. And, and we've had that every week. It's been fun to watch. FIU is this week's opponent. Last year, going to the fourth quarter, they had like 25 total yards in the game. Right. Now, new year, new team. Uh, they're going to try to run the football, but uh, what do you see in FIU? Yeah, the, the quarterback is back from a year ago. He's a really good player, very strong arm. Um, you know, they're, they're a team of South Florida guys, so they're going to have skill uh, all over the place. They, they do a really good job on their offensive line. They, they have a unique running game. Um, it makes them – they, they have they very, very few sacks, and they give up very few tackle for losses, which you know those are big numbers for us. We right. want to create negative plays, and they do a great job of limiting that um, – I'm sure that their performance in our game a year ago was not who they thought they were. They obviously went on to have a great year. They won nine games. Um, so we expect, as we do every week with whoever we play, we expect to see a different version of that team when they come out to play Miami than when they play against somebody else. We know that they've had a two weeks to prepare for us. Um, they will be well prepared, um, but I suspect our guys will be as well. Can't lose sight that this is this is a rivalry game. Sure. I mean, no matter what anybody says, uh, you've got so many crossover players, whether they're family, whether they were high school teammates, whether they competed in high school, the, it's going to be a high-level game. Yeah, they have a chip on their shoulder, and they want to prove that they can play at this level. Mm -hmm. and, and many of them can. You know? So I think that's the whole point, is, is, that, uh, is that don't turn into a game of individuals and be the better team. And be, better, be the better team over 60 minutes. You know? uh, you know, again, everyone can be motivated, okay? but now your habits is what will last you throughout the course of the game. And let's just, you know, Let's get, in, let's get into a game of, of, of high energy and high effort and see who can sustain them the longest. Miami and FIU at Marlins Park coming up on Saturday. Kickoff is uh, just a little bit after 7 o'clock. Canes and FIU will continue on the Manny Diaz Show with a breakdown right here on the Manny Diaz Show. Welcome to the breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. And coach, what do you have for us today? Well, I've been saying here for a couple of weeks that Shaq Quarterman is playing better than any linebacker in the country. So coming off a of bye week, I figured, you know what, why don't we spend a few minutes and have a, a Shaq Quarterman appreciation moment and look at some of the plays he's made here over the last month that to me are just really standout plays that I think are just worth get, kind of looking under the hood and, and, and exploring. So, And it really started in, in, in our lowest moment, the Georgia Tech game. Where as a leader, you have to make a choice. You know, what am I going to do? And, and, and he went out there and then he won this game on his own for us. And so let's start with this couple of sequence right here. So you see Shaq right here is lined up, you know, in this B gap right here. Mm -hmm. This is an outside zone play. So the first thing Shaq's going to do is he's going to work sideways, work sideways. Does a great job staying square right now to the line of scrimmage. Okay. Beats that block with the speed, gets to the edge. Now watch the finish. This is how you know it's 55 on the tackle. Woof. Look at the knockback on the running back. And by the way, the head completely out of the tackle. That's right. Just the way to teach out is a right shoulder tackle, wraps up, and finishes. And just an intimidating presence when a Miami middle linebacker, by standard, should be just a dominating play. The next snap, okay, and again, talking about guys who need to make plays and, and, and games where you got to have it. The next snap, an inside zone play right now. Same thing. He's getting blocked by two men, okay? Watch this. Right there, the hand. Right there, knocks the ball out. This is a senior play, and is the first guy on the ground. We say, who's the first? Like basketball. Coach L would be proud. Who's the first guy on the ground? And it's Shaq. Forced it and recovered it. Big-time players make big-time plays. And, Coach, you teach takeaways. I mean, that's a part you of do. your lessons, you right? You do, but you know what? Sometimes it takes a certain special player to make a play like that. And it continues. So this is the next week uh, in, the, in the game against Pitt. All right, this is a very difficult play. So here's Shaq right here, and he's keying the running back. They're going to run a little naked. Okay, they're going to disguise it with motion. They're trying to get you to look at the wide receiver in motion. Okay, and they're trying to slip the tailback out in the flat. Okay, so Shaq's got to take 
21 out there in the flat. That's why they're disguising him with all this eye candy, trying to get your eyes off that. Okay, he can't get fooled. Bang, gets out the flat, but here's what I love. It's the calling card, right? It's not just making the tackle. Give him something he'll remember. There's the shoulder. There it is, right there. The shack shoulder. This time it's the left shoulder. Shows up again the way he finishes the tackle. You know, and again, they struggled to get back to the last scrimmage. And Shaq worked a lot on his speed. You can see his speed, sideline to sideline. So just gobbles up all the grass right here. And that's how a middle linebacker plays sideline to sideline. The next week, go to Tallahassee. And here he is again. There he is. He's our B-gap player. He's reading the tailback. He sees this as outside zone. Okay, so he works sideways, works sideways. And very similar to what you saw against Georgia Tech. Bang, he's in the clear now. There it is again. The shoulder does a great job. The back tries to stop and wrap or, or cut back on him. Shaq's got a great wrap. Spins him to the ground. Tiger for loss. It's big time play. And again, these are people are just trying to run forward, right? And they're going backwards trying to run the ball outside towards Shaq's way. And nobody can get a hand on him. You can't get a hand on the guy because the speed of thought is, mm -hmm. you know, is so quick. So here's again later from the same game. Boom, a quick little flare screen. So he diagnoses it quickly, sees the quarterback turn his shoulders, and watch, boom, he's gone in an instant. Now, so many players right here, this is where we talk about trust on defense. So many players right here are going to hustle and get out there, and they're going to let the ball cross their face. Romeo Finley does a great job setting an edge right, right here like this. Makes Cam Akers have to cut back into pursuit, which happens to be wearing number 55. Bam, but see the same thing. See how right here... He gathers himself. See those couple steps right there? Yep. It's not breaking down, but he gathers himself to stay leveraged on the football, and he hits it again with his right shoulder. And then what does he do? He wraps the man to the ground. We say either you can wrap him and knock him back or wrap him and roll him over your back to the ground. That's another tackle for loss. And then later in the game, just by pure domination kicking in right now, and again, just if you want to say, just how do I play linebacker? Diagnose the run. Now watch. Checks this gap right here, right? Is the running back going to cut through here? So he's staying behind the ball. See his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage, right? Nope. The running back decides to take it over to the next hole. Okay. Track him, track him, track him. But Pickney's done a good job of leveraging this. Rousseau's done a good job of leveraging that. Okay. Keep tracking, keep tracking. Oh Again, boy. squares himself up and watch the running back actually turn away from contact. And that's when you've left your mark of how you tackle, people know right there. When you start to brace for impact before you get tackled as running back, that they know who you, they, they've got your license plate number. They know 55's coming. That's not our problem. What do you see again? The head not in the tackle, a right shoulder tackle, and look at the wrap. Look at the arms wrapping right there behind the back of the running back's hamstrings. You pull his knees up to the sky, and they all go down. It's hard to run without your knees. Great tackle. And then last week, Louisville game. To show you a cross section of some of these plays against Louisville. Again, here you see Shaq right here, lined up in the B gap. Louisville runs outside zone better than anybody in the country. So it does a great job. Now, watch on this block. The offensive lineman tries to get out on him quick. They know mm -hmm. that's 55, right? But because Shaq has his um, pad still squared to the line of scrimmage, he can slip under that, throws the, throws the arm over right there. See the little swim move? Knocks the offensive lineman's hand off of him. Boom. Just like that. Now, has the speed to get back out in the alley. Mike Pickens does a great job. And again, Rob Knowles, they were setting the edge out there. But even a small thing right here, see how he stays behind the football right there like that. And what does that not allow the running back to do? He can't cut Come back. back. Right. So all the running back's choices right now are bad. Go forward to Rob Knowles, go outside into Mike Pickney, or cut back and get the shack shoulder, right? So he decides to revote, go back outside, and by now it's too late. It's like one of those like scary movies. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, boom, the guy has you, and now you're TFL'd again by Shaq. Coach, you talk about his ability to tackle and tackle so cleanly, but also his balance. I mean, he puts himself into some awkward situations like right here where he can adjust and he never breaks stride. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. And, that, and that's the pure instinct of playing linebacker. Linebackers have to have the same vision running backs have mm -hmm. where they can, see, they can see the same holes, right? And then the running back goes on to the next hole and he has the ability to go on to the next hole. So that very similar to what you saw in the Florida State play. You know, I'm just tracking you you know, from here to there, whichever way you go, oh, you want to go me out there? I'm right there with you. Wherever you go, there I am. And another example right here. Again, same game. Now they want to run the ball inside. So now the running back's downhill. Watch where Shaq is. Shaq's downhill. Now this almost looks like a blitz, but it's not. This is Shaq simply reading his keys, 
He sees the fullback coming here to block. He sees a running back with a downhill course. So what is, instead of going sideways like he did before, he goes downhill. But again, what do you notice? His pads are what? Square, Square. line of scrimmage. The running back has a couple different options which way he can go. So that's what, so does Shaq. Does a great job navigating the hole. Now, the guy that's designed to block him, watch the offensive lineman. They're trying to come off to Shaq. He's, it's too late. Right. He's just there too soon. They can't get a hand on the guy. The running back tries to squirm out, does a great job, and then watch. It's still is always about finishing with the wrap, the fundamentals of wrapping a leg, understanding right there a running back can't run right now. Once he's got you in the trap, he's he, gone. He's got you, and you're done. You're not going anywhere. We always say is defenses watch when a running back lands on his back, back towards his own goal line. That means you've done a great job tackling, right? Because you know that the running back went backwards, which is an outstanding play. And this is just basically the cross section of plays that, to me, have just made him. It's, it's helped our obviously our run defense, you know, to be what it is. But to see a guy like this take his game, and it was already at a very high level, and to elevate the way it has, is, to me, Shaq Corbin is playing as good as any linebacker in the country. And there's no question, Coach, about him and his effort since the day he hit this campus. It is. It, there's no doubt. He cares about Miami. His effort's outstanding. But his conditioning level and the way he pushes himself and goes so hard right now, it is a sight to see. That'll do it for this week on the breakdown section with Coach Manny Diaz.